Hello everyone. Uh, in between the episodes, as you can see, I did the uh, mounting of this uh, tool hanger thing here. As I said in the last episode, I had to cut some metal, these parts, and uh, yeah, I did that. So I used the new Dremel that I ordered, the uh, Dremel 8220, I think. Yeah, 8220. This is a 12 volt battery powered one. Also had some extra space on the board here, so I used one of these, uh, one of these drill bits uh, with the tap on this, uh, on the bit as well. Things from Xcan. I ordered these back in 2019 or something like that. Back when I was first learning to tap and wanted to tap my uh, 2020 extrusions for my Voron 2.2 easily, and ordered these, but these were horrible. So I used one of those here. I don't know if you can see the hexagon there, but if you can, that's, well, the back side of this is a hexagon. So, yeah, that, use that to hang the squares, and I'll probably use another one around here to hang something else, but I don't know what yet. I packed my Voron 2 Doom Cube and my Tiny M, and uh, yeah, as you can see, they're here, and they both made it here fine. There is nothing majorly damaged on either one of those. On the Tiny M, so far, the only thing I found I removed the door by the way, that's nothing to do with the shipping. Only damage that I found was just a loose screw, nothing serious on this side that attaches this rail to the frame. And as a result, the, this side of the drawer was moving up and down, but nothing too serious. Uh, on the Voron 2, there are a couple of damaged parts, like broken parts that I need to reprint. But uh, those are just these uh, skirt flange accent pieces for the top. One of them is here, the other one is on the back. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's an easy fix, I just need to reprint them on the Voron Zero when I get the Voron Zero working again. And yes, this was shipped without skirts or anything protective of the top electronics. And somehow, at least this is based on my first impressions, I didn't turn on any of these three 3D printers. Uh, based on my first impressions, uh, they look fine. but. Again, I guess we will know more when I try to turn these on. There were some uh, bubble wrap and stuff like that that could potentially produce static electricity that was touching the electronics on this one, not on the other two 3D printers. So, uh, yeah, it is possible that static electricity killed the spider or you know something like that, but uh, I doubt it. They usually survive that, but we will know more when I turn this on. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, tiny M is on the bench, not on the on the spots. This is what I had in mind for, at first. The tiny M was going to go here, and the Voron Zero was going to go here. But uh, the problem was the tiny M, my tiny M, that is this with my Doom Cube mode, uh, is really heavy. Like my Voron Two is pretty heavy because it's a Voron Two. It's the 350 size and it's a Doom Cube. But even with all that in mind, my tiny M is heavier, so it is really difficult to maneuver. So yeah, uh, initially put that there, but it was a huge pain to move it, and I do uh, mod my printers pretty often, as you know. So decided to move it here. But uh, I'm making a lot of progress on here, so that is good. This is uh, three days after the last recording, so uh, you know this is not daily progress anymore. It was just getting boring, so. Uh, yeah, I'm still working on stuff, but uh, there is a lot more for me to figure out what to do with and there's also more in that uh, closet too, so yeah, there's still some work to do. About to open my first roll of ABS filament from the move and uh, yeah, as you can see the vacuum is still intact, it's still holding. I don't know if, like, it is possible that some air leaked into this, but uh, it's mostly uh, still holding, so I think this will be fine. Also, the humidity monitor is, uh, looks fine to me still. I mean, looks like Azure still didn't change the desiccant, so it's, there's no danger. I guess she's the intern. Anyway, it looks like this is uh, still fine. So it's been almost two weeks since the last recording in this video, and as you can see, the workshop is still a mess. I'm still working on stuff, but uh, the past week or so I couldn't really do much, like I injured my back when I was actually, it was a stupid injury, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing anything but just standing up and recording a video, but yeah, it, it happens, I was working on a Micron video, but yeah, uh, if you have herniated discs, you know it, how disabling it can be, so yeah, I'm resting it, but 
uh, once I feel a bit better I will continue working here and that and that will definitely be in this video uh, in the meantime you can see that um, I started using my Voron Zero and right now I'm printing the micron parts which are going into this box for the well for the micron build uh, I don't know if this video will air first or if the micron video will air first I'm assuming this one but I don't know uh, but yeah, either way, I'm working on that and the Voron Zero, as you can see, is printing and there's a video about the Voron Zero also coming. You'll also notice the Tiny M's back is off and there is a Raspberry Pi in there. Sorry, I can't really get up, but yeah, on the right side, above the power supply, obviously, there is a Raspberry Pi behind that ribbon cable. Uh, I think I'm going to seal that for the Micron build and then uh, source a different Raspberry Pi for the Tiny M. Uh, I think the Micron build will be a quicker build to finish than the Tiny M, even though the Tiny M is already assembled. Since it's a scratch build, it involves many iterations of the same hardware until I can get it working the way I want it to. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it will be quicker for me to get it get the Micron working and then uh, work on the Tiny M. So. Uh, that's the idea. I'm working on sourcing a Raspberry Pi. As soon as I find a Raspberry Pi that doesn't cost uh, an arm and a leg, that's what I'm going to use. I also have the ES15 electric screwdriver here. I don't know. I recorded an unboxing video of that, but I wasn't too satisfied with it. So I don't know if I'm going to release that or not. But uh, yeah, I have that and I'm working on a review for that at least, even if I decide to not release the unboxing. And uh, you'll also see the Voron 2 bed here. So I already applied a new heater to the Voron 2 bed. Obviously, the move from 220 volts to 110 volts meant that I needed a freedom heater for the Voron 2 bed. So, yeah, I bought one from Fabrico. Again, more details will be in the next Voron 2 episode. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. I don't want to spoil everything. A few more days passed and I've made a decent amount of progress since the last recording. Uh, as you can see, this part of the workshop is almost complete. I still need a transformer to go here and I already ordered one from Amazon and that transformer will power my uh, Zytronic LF2900 soldering station and I think my ZD915 as well. The ZD915 on the outside has a label that says it only supports 220 volts. The power supply inside, which is the only thing that's wired to the input, says it supports 110 and 220. So. I don't know, it probably will work on 110 as well, because, well, typically soldering equipment only works on 1 voltage, so they probably just labeled that because of that, but I uh, didn't want to risk it in case the label on the power supply is wrong, so that will also run through the uh, the t uh, transformer when I get that here, and I ordered a 500 watt one, a fancy 500 watt one, you'll see what I mean uh, when I get it, if it is what it looks like on Amazon, but uh, otherwise, yeah. This is the setup right now. I'm still a bit work in progress. I also need to salt all these screws and uh, I really should have done that before I moved here, but I was too lazy and yeah, I, I still feel like that. So who knows when I'll get to that. I should probably do a screw sorting live stream, right? Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll get to that when I get to that. The Voron Zero is still printing the tiny, uh, not tiny, I'm sorry, the micron parts, as you can see here. Um, yeah, and on this, this side of the workshop, uh, it's pretty much done. I'm going to get some uh, cheap IKEA shelves that go on here, just for this bit. So tiny shelves, three of them. I already ordered them from IKEA though, so they should be here fairly soon. And uh, that should give me a bit more uh, storage space to work with is the idea. And I'll move the lights to accommodate those uh, shelves. But uh, speaking of lighting, another thing I plan to do, I didn't order one yet, but I will get to that at some point. Uh, this was my microphone arm on the old computer setup, but the idea right now is to mount a, a filming grade LED panel on that. Some, you know, some of the, uh, something like the aperture light or something like that. Uh, yeah, typically with a lighting setup, you want three different light sources anyway. You want one light in the background, which is this. You want another light coming from the front left, which will be this. Those four, and this one will be the front right. Technically, one of the two, left or right, one of them needs to be brighter. So I don't know which one will end up being brighter, but uh, I'm sure some of, one of them will because it's not the same light. So yeah, I think it will provide uh, better lighting for this area as the idea, but... I don't know, we will see when I get to that. And uh, yeah, other than that, I think the workshop is pretty much ready. All this stuff in this plastic container will move to the storage room, but 
I need to empty the storage room before I do that and yeah my back still hurts so that's taking a while basically I have to get rid of all those packing materials so yeah there are really like 20 bags or something that I have to get rid of somehow yeah pretty much the workshop is almost ready uh, when this is completely finished I will also shoot a, a tour of this area and probably upload that, that as a separate video on the channel as well so here is the new transformer I bought for the soldering iron and the desoldering station this white box labeled UMI and uh, yeah it is compact as you can see you now normally uh, with a transformer uh, you're talking about an EI transformer typically something like this and those are typically large as you can see and this is even this isn't even the same rating this is like uh like a quarter of the rating of this or something like that and it's just some random transformer i have it's also not the correct doesn't have the correct tap so i'm just showing this as an example of an ei transformer inside this uh, umi you find a toroidal transformer and that makes this more compact i'm also a fan of toroidal transformers in general they're usually preferred in audio applications which is when i discovered them but they also don't have that annoying hum like when i turn on the zytronic soldering station it has a random ei transformer in it and you can definitely hear it the hum uh, that is not the case with the toroidal transformer in this and toroidal transformers as i said are more compact so it allows for this form factor and uh, overall i really do like the construction of this umi this has multiple different protections built in there is a fuse on the input side and there is also another inline fuse that i discovered when i turned this uh, ter tore this apart when i uh, to check the construction inside there is an inline fuse that goes to the transformer or other way around i don't remember but there is another fuse and there is over temperature protection built in apparently as well if you trust them so yeah it has a few protections versus a lot of this box uh, transformers you find are just this ei transformer in a box and just some wires and that's it so yeah i'm pretty happy with this also has a usb charger in the front 5 volt 1 amp so you know the basic charger nothing too capable and a uh, chi charger on the top so i can charge my phone on this as well which is why this is on top and not the electronic soldering station so that i can charge my phone here while i uh, work on stuff so uh yeah i didn't really expect to find something like this on amazon but i'm pretty happy with this so in case you're interested i'll link it in the description below as well but let's move on to the shelves for the workshop so here are the shelves mounted i bought these three shelves from ikea and uh, yeah as you can see i just mounted them didn't really need to shoot too much for it so here they are I, I already populated the top one but i have i'm sure i'll find some stuff to put on the other two that's why uh, i bought those because i'm sure there'll be stuff i'll also make a separate video about these lights uh, as i've already shared my opinions some of my opinions about these but there is more and plus i figured out figured out a way to uh basically disable the call home bullshit they bundle with this so it's no longer going to depend on some cloud service which who knows when they'll go out instead i'll control it locally it is possible to do so i figured it out and i uh i have it working but there's still a few uh things i have to work out but uh, yeah it is working so it is definitely possible and it's controlled on home assistant so yeah it works but more information on that will be when i make a video about these as well so stay tuned for that but uh otherwise yeah that's it for this video and in this series for a while i hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like down below and stay tuned for the next episode and uh yeah that's it so thanks for watching